So, hello everyone. Today I'm gonna talk about the subject of export armor for the M1 series of main battle tanks. Let's start with the most controversial topic of the Swedish competition for the new MBT, where M1A2 competed against the French Leclerc and German Leopard 2. We can see these tanks here on the photo. First and foremost, contrary to most claims, the reality is that Sweden uh, never tested a US Army armor package for the M1A2. In this case, it will be a second generation heavy armor package fielded around the uh, 1990s with late production M1A1 HA, new M1A1 HC and the M1A2 itself. What we can see in the Swedish sources is that the Sweden tested their own armor package in form of the turret and the whole test rigs. So here we can see these uh, hull and the turret test rigs that used Swedish armor for the M1A2 because uh, the plan was that the Sweden would eventually uh, use their own armor in the M1A2s that would be produced in Sweden on the license. Uh, around 200 tanks were planned, so this was realistic. So here on the right we can see the turret test rigs and here is the hull test rig. Swedes also got inspired uh, by the US and they made their own experimental armor package that uses depleted uranium plates. Test results were extremely positive and Swedes concluded that if a limiting factor for your tank armor design is the armor volume and not the armor weight, then the depleted uranium as armor material is favorable. However, for Sweden, it seems that the limiting factor was the armor weight. Uh, in general, they were more preferring a lighter tank. On the other hand, here we have a uh, other source from inside the Pentagon from April 8, uh, 1993. Uh, and what this source tell us? Well, it seems that in it, initially, Swedes were preferring to purchase M1A2. If only US government uh, would permit a sale of M1A2 tanks with heavy armor package containing depleted uranium. In the end, we know US did not permit sale of the M1A2 with heavy armor package, but only M1A2 with downgraded export armor package. Or Swedish armor package, perhaps. It is also certain that US did not allow Swedes to test heavy armor package. Why? Well, one must understand one thing. GDLS, the manufacturer, was willing to sell the tank. However, the army was not so much keen on selling the tank. Uh, in fact, when I talked with my sources, they claimed that even today, US Army is not very happy that the M1A1 and M1A2 are uh, exported to various countries, but the politicians and GD GDLS, well, they kind of forced uh, the exports. Well, the exports objectively are good for the manufacturer and for their country. They make money on, on this, right? And they can keep production. For the army, well, it might not be so good from their point of view. But anyway. It is more likely that Swedish documents, if we consider what I said previously, either show some assumptions or estimations Swedes made for the M1A2 protection, 
or they show protection levels of M1A2 with export armor package. Anyway, after the failure in the Swedish competi competition, General Dynamics Land Systems developed a newer version of export armor package, also known as third generation armor package. There is an article about it, but it's not accessible to me. I only know from a transcript of it that this armor package was developed for Greece and Turkey. If they would purchase M1A2, they would use this new export armor. And it was roughly equivalent in protection to the US Army M1A2 second generation armor package. So uh, this new export armor package used different geometry inside of the armor uh, and some new materials probably to achieve higher protection levels without using depleted uranium. So, however, it seems that US probably have several different versions or generations, if you prefer, of its export armor package. Just like they have several versions or generations of their heavy armor package and next generation armor package. And it is a reasonable assumption. So they do not need to sell their best armor technology, risking any leaks while design of modern special armor makes it easy to tune it to protect against specific spectrum of threats to still making, uh, still making uh, export armor packages uh, competitive on the market. You might assume that the Arab states use the same type of the arm export armor package as all tanks exported there have exactly the same letter within the turret serial number. This letter is E and it's visible on Egyptian, Iraqi, Moroccan, Saudi Arabian and Kuwaiti tanks. Here we can see Egyptian M1A1. If you zoom or um, increase the size of this uh, photograph, you can see that the letter on the turret serial number is E. This is Kuwaiti M1A2 uh, with also the letter E uh, ending the turret serial number, which means that Egyptian and Kuwaiti tanks have the same armor package. But here is Saudi Arabian M1A2S. We can also see the letter E in the turret serial number. Iraqi M1A1, again letter E. And Moroccan M1A1s, and again we can see the letter E. So, are M1 tanks for Arab states badly protected? No, not at all. Despite that their armor is considered as downgraded compared to armor used in the US Army tanks, Arab M1s can still be considered as well protected. And from analysis of their combat performance, it seems that front armor protects, protects against all threats they encounter. Maybe besides the most modern and heaviest ATGMs like 9M133 Cornet. While their side, rear, top and belly armor performs just like in any other modern tank. On the other hand, Australian tanks have letter A in their serial numbers on turrets. And I found a document in the past from Australian government that stated their M1A1 SA tanks have similar or same protection as US tanks of that same production period. But Australian M1A1s do not use DU or depleted uranium in their arm armor, but some different material, perhaps tungsten. 
My assumption is that Australian M1A1's armor is roughly equivalent in protection to US third generation heavy armor package. Of course, Australia plans to upgrade their tanks to the M1A2 SEP V2 or M1A2 SEP V3 standard in near future. So their protection might be further improved. It is also worth to mention Australia plans to increase number of its tank fleet from 59 tanks to around 90 tanks. In any case, this is uh, as much as we can research on the subject of the export armor for the export M1s uh, using open source materials. So I hope this was short but uh, interesting uh, video for you all and it explained uh, a bit of controversy around the export uh, armor for the M1s. So see you later in the next video.